Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, the Lord is with you. Good to hear that in my ears. Hope you heard it in your ears. As, um, as we begin this morning, I would note that um, I would say welcome to all of you here at American Lutheran in LaPorte City. And for those of you who may not know, my name is Luther Thorson. I'm a retired pastor living in Grundy Center. And I am delighted to be here, and I'm delighted that you are here. There are a number of uh, printed announcements in the bulletin itself that I trust that you will read. I have two to add. One is, uh, we rejoice with Trevor and Brianne Larson on the birth of their baby boy, Chase Ronald. He was born on April 20th. The proud grandma is Barb Bader. And then also, we also rejoice in the birth of another baby boy to Mitch and Lauren Marlott. Rory James is his name, born on April 21st. Proud grandparents are Jim and Mel Bartz. So congratulations to all the family there. Are there any other uh, announcements to bring to the congregation's attention at this time? Then we will continue with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, and by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are welcomed restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away. And in them, we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. We continue with our our gathering hymn, number 377. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Jesus is risen. Round with his glorious light, splendor the Lamb, heaven forever. Oh, what a miracle God has in sight. Jesus is risen, and we shall arise. Give God the glory, hallelujah. Walking the way, Christ in the center, telling the story to open our eyes, breaking the bread, Giving us glory, Jesus, our blessing, our constant surprise. 
Jesus is risen, and we shall arise. Give God the glory, hallelujah. Jesus the vine, we are the branches. Life in the spirit, the fruit of the tree. Heaven to earth, Christ to the people, gift of the future now flowing to me. Jesus is risen and we shall arise. Give God the glory, hallelujah. Weeping be gone, sorrow be silent. Death put asunder and Easter is bright. Cherubim sing, O grave be open. Clothe us in wonder, adorn us in light. Jesus is risen and we shall arise. Give God the glory, hallelujah. City of God, Easter forever, golden Jerusalem, Jesus the Lamb, river of life, saints and archangels sing with creation to God the I Am. Jesus is risen, and we shall arise. Give God the glory, hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone host high. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Acts 2, 14a, 36 through 41. Today's reading is the conclusion of Peter's sermon preached following the giving of the Holy Spirit to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. The center of his preaching is the bold declaration that God has made the crucified Jesus both Lord and Christ. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Our psalm today comes from Psalm 116, 1 through 4, and 12 through 19, and will be read responsively. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened from, to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious In your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Our second reading comes from 1 Peter 1, 17 through 23. The imagery of exile is used to help the readers of this letter understand that they are strangers in a strange land. Christians no longer belong to this age. Through the death of Christ, we belong to God so that our focus, faith, and hope are no longer on such things as silver or gold. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart, you have been born anew, not of perish perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As we hear the gospel this morning, I would remind you that a couple weeks ago you heard the Easter morning gospel, right, where the women find the tomb empty. And then last Sunday you probably heard a story in John's gospel, actually two stories, one on the evening when the disciples were in the upper room with locked doors and Jesus came in the midst of them. And Thomas not there. A week later, he was with them. And again, behind closed doors, Jesus appears to them. Today's gospel, though, is back in the afternoon of what we call Easter. Now, on that same day, uh, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about um, seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking about all these things that had happened. And as they were talking and discussing, Jesus came and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he asked them, um, what were you discussing on the way? And they stood still, looking sad. One of them, Cleopas, who was, that was his name, said to him, are, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there these days? And he replied, what things? And they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a, a prophet mighty in, in deed and word before, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now three days since all these things happened. Moreover, some women of our group we're at the tomb early this, this morning. And they did not find him. 
They did not find the body. They, they came back and said they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And, and some of our group went and, and found the tomb as the women had said, but they did not find him. They did not see him. And Jesus said to them, how, how foolish you are and slow of heart to believe all that the scriptures have declared. Well, then, beginning with, with Moses and, and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures <laughs> about himself. And they came near to the place where they were going. And and it seemed as if he were going on. But they said to him, uh, Stay with us, for, for it is evening, and, and the day is almost over. So he went in and, and stayed with them. And while they were at table, he, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and shh, he vanished from their sight. And they were saying to one another, were not our, our hearts burning within us while he, while he talked with us on the road and, and opened the scriptures to us. And that very hour, they returned to Jerusalem. And they, they found the eleven and their companions gathered together who were saying, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what had, what had happened to them on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated and I invite children to join me for a children's message. morning. Step right up here. Today is a day you can have a seat. Okay. Have you ever heard of Clark Kent? Who's Clark Kent? A person. A person. <laughs> of course. Clark. Well, at least an imaginary person. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Superman? Clark Kent is, well, is Superman in disguise, right? Yeah, that's who it is. So whether it's in the cartoons or in movies or TV, Clark Kent is the guy with glasses. But every now and then he jumps into what, well, used to be a phone booth. No, <laughs> no phone booths anymore. But he jumps in someplace and comes out. He's got on the, the trunks and the tights and big S on his chest, and he's Superman. Have you ever heard of Adam West? Ever heard of Batman? Okay, yeah, well, Adam West is a wealthy man, has a mansion with a secret, secret compartment underneath where there's all the Batmobile and all the Bat stuff. When he goes down there, he puts on the Bat suit, puts on the Bat mask. So Batman and Adam West are the same person. Clark Kent and Superman are the same person. And part of the suspense in Superman movies or in Batman movies is, will anyone figure it out that these two are the same person or that these two are the same person? In today's Gospel reading, part of the suspense is, will Cleopas 
and the other disciple figure it out? Will they figure out that this stranger that's walking with them is Jesus? Because we're told originally that, that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. They didn't know what it was. But at the end, their eyes are opened and they recognize him. And you know what? Jesus walks with each of you every day, whether we recognize it or not. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for your presence in our lives each and every day. Thank you for walking with us, whether we recognize it or not. Guide us, help us in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Grace, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We use the word close to talk about proximity, like a, a car is close on my tail, right? Or you might be traveling and, and there might be a question, is it far away? Or are we far away from where we're going? And the answer might be, uh, no, we're, we're close, we're almost there. That's all proximity. Or we might say a, a room is crowded and we had to sit close to each other. That's about proximity. But we also use the word close to talk about relationships. We might have a, a close friend. A close friend is someone that is a good friend. We spend a lot of time together, maybe have shared a lot together in life experience. Or maybe after an event, you might say that we felt close to each other. That is, maybe you were in a work project together or a church project or a town project or a mission project. Well, perhaps a, a theme image for today might be this, uh, like a, a wagon wheel with the words close to the center. You see, with a wheel, you, the, you, as you get closer to the center, the spokes get closer to each other, right? Right? Well, also, as we get closer to Jesus, we get closer to each other at the same time. The other spokes, so to speak. You see, Easter Sunday, the women were at the tomb. We, we hear this story uh, of an angel there at the tomb who told the women that, that Jesus had risen. And they were, when Jesus appeared to them, they were close to Jesus. They held on to his feet. They worshipped him. And then last story, last Sunday, there were two stories in John's Gospel. On Easter evening was one of them where Jesus appeared in, in the upper room behind closed doors and said, Peace be with you. And then a week later, when Thomas was there with them, again Jesus said, Peace be with you. And Thomas was close enough to touch the wounds in his hands and in his side. And... We might say that we touch the body of Jesus in word and in bread and wine of communion, in touching each other and in serving the poor. And with today's text, we are, we are back on what we would call Easter afternoon, kind of between the Easter morning story and, and the story with Thomas last week. You might have seen some paintings called The Walk to Emmaus, and in those, it's usually people, three people walking away from you. And it's obvious, usually, which one is Jesus. Often there's a halo on that one, but not always. But they are walking and talking. It's good to go for a walk, right? Alone or with a friend. Maybe clear your mind. Maybe put things together or sort some things out. Maybe think more clearly. 
Well, researchers, I'm quoting now, researchers are learning that as we walk, our brains integrate information in ways specific to the act of walking. Our brains connect information we already have in ways that we might not otherwise connect. Some people prepare talks or sermons while walking. Others work out difficult problems while walking. But can you imagine this walk with these two disciples? They are walking and talking. Yes, they are in close proximity, but as they walk, maybe they get closer. We call that bonding. Perhaps you know that people walk their dogs not only for for exercise, but also for bonding, for connecting with the dog. And that's true also with people. We walk together and bond together. Earlier in today's text and and later, Cleopas and the other disciple are, are walking and talking with Jesus, even if they do not recognize him. And there is a significant moment between those two times of walking that the two disciples stand still. They look sad. And Jesus asks about what things had happened. And they say, are you the only one that doesn't know? And maybe you catch a bit of humor there. And they even might have said, but we had hoped that that he would be the one who would redeem Israel. It's a moment of honesty and of shattered dreams. You might imagine a a window, broken, but not all the way through, shattering in every direction. I recall, recall being in fourth or fifth grade. I was in the living room and my brother was there, and, and it was before the bus had come, and we were practicing batting practice in the living room. No bat, no ball. But I did have some books. And he pitched me a ball. And I swung my bat, and my books went right through a window. <clears throat> Guess who got to clean that up? It shattered. No way to put that back together. Just like Humpty Dumpty with all the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty together again. Well, we couldn't put that window together again. It was no fix, only a new window. And in the text, we have a moment of shattered dreams, of hopes that have been dashed to the ground. Can't be just put back together, but there is... Perhaps a new hope, a new dream that might be needed, just like a new window. And Jesus walks with the two and interprets the scriptures about himself. I recall about 30 years ago, I I prepared a sermon for this Sunday in the church year. Yes, it was the text from Luke 24. But I was not prepared for what happened in the preaching of that sermon. Because in the preaching, I connected, I connected not to a broken window, to, but to some broken dreams for my family at that time. That day, I said nothing in the preaching itself but I'm, or about the connection I made. But in that moment, it dawned on me that we as family were like those two on the road, and we needed Jesus to give me and to give us a new hope, a new dream for our family a new dream for my life, something new like a new window. Close to Jesus and close to each other, there are honest moments of shattered dreams and being open to new dreams and new hope at the same time. And the two disciples in the text, as they walked along, that's what Jesus did, even if they didn't initially recognize it. And now we move to the last scene. When they had arrived at Emmaus, Jesus was going on. And they asked him, stay with us. And and Jesus did. Then at table, Jesus takes the bread 
and blesses and breaks and gives it to them and their eyes were opened and they recognize him and he vanishes. Other Easter stories are about appearances of Jesus. Like on Easter morning when Jesus met the women on the way on their way back from the tomb, Jesus appeared to them. Or on Easter evening when the doors were locked and Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Or, or a week later when, again, the doors were locked or the doors were shut and Jesus appears and says, Peace be with you. And Thomas with them then. But this time, they're walking on the road. And now, at table, you might have seen a painting well-known uh, by a well-known artist, a Chinese-American artist. His name is Hai Ki. And there are two people at table with, with Jesus, and they're on, they're on the far side of the table, so the near side of the table is open, perhaps so that you and I might imagine ourselves being at that table. And Jesus is lifting up the bread. And we might imagine recognizing Jesus in that moment. You see, people are close to each other at meals. We are in close proximity to each other. And yet we may get closer, we may be drawn closer to each other in relationship. You know that's true. It might be a Sunday dinner for you or some other family meals. Maybe Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner or Easter dinner or Easter breakfast. Maybe, maybe it's every Friday evening together. Meals are important in many families. And also in, in congregations, those meals are important. Maybe it's the fellowship time after worship together. Maybe it's annual meals like an Easter breakfast at worship or at church or a harvest dinner or soup suppers along the way. At table, it is time for conversation and for bonding. And Jesus is present And also the conversation may be different. But this is also part of the dynamic of the meal we call Holy Communion. We are drawn closer to each other. And we are drawn closer to the center, which is Jesus, all at the same time. Just like wheels on a, or spokes on a wheel get closer to each other as they are closer to the center. It is true that, that walking together draws us closer to each other. And today Jesus says, I promise to be with you as you walk together, even if you do not recognize me. It is true. In times of shattered dreams, we often share with each other. And today Jesus says, I promise to draw you close to each other and closer to God at the same time, it is true. Shared meals draw us closer to each other. And today Jesus says, I promise to be at table with you. I promise to draw you closer to each other and to God at the same time. At your table when you share the communion, at the table in fellowship, and in your tables at home. Yes, Jesus promises to draw us closer to each other and closer to the center at the same time, like spokes on a wagon wheel. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.
God's army is on. When they invite him, as fades the first day, bread and is broken, Christ is made known. When we are walking, doubtful and dreading, blinded by sadness, the slowness of heart, yet Christ walks with us, ever is waiting, yes, the invitation stay to not part. Though I am with you, Jesus has spoken, this is Christ's promise, this is Christ's sign. When the church gathers, when bread is broken, there Christ is with us in bread and wine. Christ our companion, hope for the journey, bread of compassion, open our eyes. Grant us your vision, set all hearts burning, all creation with you may rise. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in hope and in the joy of resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Ever-present God, you make yourself known in the breaking of bread and in the bonds of community. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out your good news. Hear us, O God. As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field and the flowing waters. Care for the earth and your loving creation. Strengthen those who safeguard threatened land and water. Hear us, O God. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. Hear us, O God. Mothering God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for anyone hungering for your comforting presence this day, especially Mark, Kate, Bonnie, Linda, Michelle, Norm, Mani, Alan, Jeff, the DeBriar family. Hear us, O God. You pour out your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized by gender or sexuality and those whose stories are not believed. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O God. And God, we rejoice with Trevor and Brianne Larson on the birth of their baby, Chase Ronald. 
And we also rejoice in the birth of another baby, Mitch, uh, to Mitch and Lauren, Rory James. God, as these parents have welcomed them into their family, may they guide them in the days ahead to walk with them and to walk with you. Hear us, O God. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints, especially Janice Frank. As you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Gathered together by the Spirit of Jesus, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us share the peace with one another. That's peace. That's peace. That's peace. That's peace. That's peace. That's peace. You may be seated.
Join we now in celebration at the Savior's invitation. again in love to meet us with his very life to feed us. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give you thanks for these gifts of earth in the breaking of this bread. Reveal to us the risen one in the pouring of this wine, pour out on us, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, among us by your grace, that evil may not harm us to give place. Abide, O oh dear Redeemer, among us with your word. And thus now and hereafter, true peace and joy afford. Abide with heavenly brightness, among us precious light. Your truth direct and keep us from error's gloomy night. Abide with richest blessings among us, bounteous Lord. Let us in grace and wisdom grow daily through your word. Abide, O oh faithful Savior, among us with your love. Grant steadfastness and help us to reach our home. Heart.